Well, hello there, Papper people. Are you guys ready for the biggest scandal of the CPAP industry? You guys thought cancer foam was bad? We've never had such strong polarization. That's right, we have CPAP humidifiers. Are we using tap water, distilled water, or sterile water? And I straight up got called out. WC1A says, I am shocked that you use regular tap water in your water tub. The minerals in it can only harm your CPAP. Are you talking about this? Huh? Are you talking about this? You see that? Does that disgust you? Does it sicken you? Does it make you sick? Yeah, I'm not really worried about that stuff. These minerals, they'll come right out with a little bit of white vinegar. I just haven't done it because I'm lazy. Hey, Stewie, what are you doing, man? Get out of my humidifier. Don't you know it's dirty? First up, we have this disgusting humidifier tank. Oh my God, that is so gross. Let's put a little tap water in there. White vinegar. Yeah, I'll use distilled for that, but just not for water. Nice. Let that slosh around for just a bit. Let it react. Let it break up them calcium deposits, those sodium deposits, all that disgusting stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just agitate with my finger. And as I do that, all that stuff peels right off. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, one, two, three i I'm very sneezy. Now there's plenty of articles. This includes the CDC. This includes CPAPsupplies.com who sponsors my videos, as well as an article written by Harvard. Now it says, you need to keep your CPAP clean or you'll get sick. And I don't 100% buy into that. Here's the reason why. If I use regular tap water, I understand that there's minerals in it. And if I boil this down to the point where it all evaporates, what's left is that dirty mineral deposit. That's not going into my machine and it's not going into my lungs. I'm fine with that. What you do need to do, in my opinion, to prevent getting sick is every morning you have water in here, you need to empty it and start with fresh water before you go to bed the next time. That results in people getting sick. Now, another thing to that that you have to counter is the CDC also says that if there is pathogens inside of the tap water, that tap water can be aerosolized. Those bacteria, those pathogens can come up all the way up the tube and into your lungs and it can cause you to get sick. Now, I looked this up. I couldn't find any confirmed cases of people getting sick from their CPAP machines in that manner, but I will 100% leave that for you to decide. Personally, the only time I ever use humidity is when I'm actually sick. And I don't get sick a lot, but when I do get sick, I like to use a nasal or nasal pillow mask. And so to keep my nose clear, because I don't like full face masks, I use some humidity and I always use tap water and I get well hella fast, except for the last time that was really bad. So the article put out by Harvard actually says really the only thing you need to keep clean on your CPAP equipment is a humidifier tank itself. So I really don't buy that the minerals can harm your CPAP machine. It's just gonna build up in your tank. I am also surprised that you do not do a thorough cleaning with a round brush attached to a stainless steel wire and clean the entire inside of your tubing. I think that your cleaning routine leaves a lot to be desired. Oh, so you're, so you're talking about one of these, these wire brush metallic twizzlers? No thanks. The only reason I would need to plunge my tube is if I let this get moist and wet and I didn't dry it immediately. If I didn't do that, mildew mold is gonna grow in this and stink to high hell, and yeah, probably make me stick, sick. If I'm using this, it's because I use my humidifier and I didn't properly dry it after use. I always dry my tube after use. Also, I am surprised you use Dawn. Actually, I don't really use Dawn dish soap. I offered that in the video you're referring to because Dawn is readily available. It is also highly recommended by the mask manufacturers. What I actually use is my own product called Mask Bright. I do one little spritz on the top, I do another little spritz on the inside, and I rinse with water, then I put it, well, we'll get to that. Now this is the Fisher & Paykel Bravita. This is what I have been using a lot lately. It is a nasal pillow mask. These get boogers on them constantly. What I do is I actually spray it with Mask Bright. Now I also do this. I pop this end off, and I do a little spritzy spritzy in there and I just kind of agitate it for two seconds, and that's really about it. Now I'm gonna take some water and run the water through it. Now, that concludes me washing my CPAP mask. So now all that's left to do is dry it. Have you not heard of Alconex or Turgozyme? No.
I haven't. But I have heard of overkill. I use these in combination with an ultrasonic cleaner or when I clean manually with brushes. And then there is that drying machine that you use. 45 minutes to dry your equipment. Don't you know that you can just hang the tube for a while, plug it into the CPAP and put it on airplane mode and start it? That will send air through it and dry it. Why do you need a special machine to dry your stuff? I don't like any increases in my electric bill. I don't really get some of your advice. Raising your electric bill? We're gonna have to test that out. Now, the reason it's disgusting to hang your tube is because when you hang your tube, it's gonna get mold and mildew as it's drying wet in a nice dank environment like your house. My house too, I'm not talking about your house specifically. You know what I mean? So this begs the question, how am I gonna dry this thing? How am I gonna dry it? Now what they said is I should use my CPAP machine. So let's go ahead and use my CPAP machine. I'm gonna plug the tube in. So now I'm supposed to leave this somewhere in my sink? Where am I supposed to leave this? Oh, I don't know. How about I put it in the hurricane dryer? Now it's in airplane mode. We can see airplane mode because apparently airplane mode is free energy. So I'm gonna go ahead and do run mask fit. Otherwise it'll keep turning off. And I'm supposed to leave it running on that forever. Remember that's free energy. Oh wait, I have this plugged in here. Oh no, we see that it's actually using close to 30 watts. And I'm just supposed to let it run like this all day. That's what I'm supposed to do. So now the outside of the mask doesn't get dry. Is that, that that's what's happening? It's all wet on the outside? Oh, or. Guys, I have an idea. We could use the hurricane dryer. So here's what I'm gonna do actually. I'm gonna take that, and drop it in there. You know what we can also do? Put that little tube right there. You see that? I just plugged it in. And we can take the humidifier tank. Stewie, hey, humidifier tank. No? Okay, I don't take my orders from a cat. So I'm gonna plop that in there. So zero watts. I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be a lot more. Don't get, don't get crazy on me. That's on, that's drying. Oh, no. That's almost 300 watts. Oh my gosh. You know what? If that runs for an hour, do you know what that comes out to? My electricity costs 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, if this is running at 300 watts and I let it run for an hour, that's three cents. Versus if I let my CPAP machine do it, that costs 0.3 cents. Now, you might be saying to yourself, but Jocelyn, that's way more expensive than that. And you'd be correct. But the problem is, this is not my CPAP machine. This is not my medical device. I don't care if there's wear and tear on this. I don't want this thing to be running in mask fit mode for a couple hours every day. Plus there's no way for me to automatically shut this off. I have to be chilling with it, like right next to it to be able to turn it off. This thing, Stewie, out of the way, we're doing a presentation here. This thing, it has an auto off after an hour. So I can just hit this and go about my day and it shuts off automatically and it does a much better job drying it. That's why I like to use the equipment dryer called the Hurricane Dryer. Excuse me, Jocelyn? Jocelyn? Yes? Are you gonna talk about CPAP supplies and that they sell a Hurricane Dryer? Sure, we can talk about that. Jocelyn, did you know that some people, they go to amazon.com and they think they're gonna find a better deal? Yes, I am aware of that. If you go to CPAPsupplies.com right now, you'll see it's for $189. That's right, Jocelyn. And if I were a, a smart shopper, I'd go check Amazon first. So go on ahead, go over there and check them out. On Amazon, it says it's the exact same price, but I can maybe get it a little faster, maybe Jocelyn? Now, if you go to cpapsupplies.com and you type in cpapsupplies.com, what you'll see is cpapsupplies.com right here. It clearly says that, cpapsupplies.com. If you cpapsupplies.com, what you'll notice is that you can cpapsupplies.com. And when you get there, if you put in cpapsupplies.com, that 189 becomes a magic 151 and 20 cents. I just saved you a ton of cash. You're welcome. And one more thing, Bobo the dog here, or Bonzo, Bob, Bobo, Bong, Bongo, Bubo, 
Bubo the dog says there's a loyalty rewards program. What you get is you shop, you buy your essential needs, you earn points, you get one point for every dollar you spend, and then you can redeem. Redeem your points at 100 and save money on your order. For every 100 points, you get five bucks off. Now that's easy. Check out the sponsor of this video, cpapsupplies.com. And actually today you can get 25% off. You don't even have to use 20 lanky. That kind of sucks for me, but whatever. Now let's talk about some of this just a little bit further. There was a time when I was working in the sleep lab and we ran out of distilled water. There was no distilled water, no sterile water to be found. It was not coming in and we had to put humidification on our patients at night. Couldn't find it. So the supervisor of both the sleep lab and the entire respiratory department, she's a respiratory therapist. So she says, of course, sonomers of water pressure. She found out, checked with the joint commission, JACO. It's the joint commission on accreditation of hospital organizations. So they basically tell you what you can and can't do and you have these certain regulations that you're supposed to follow. She contacted them, said, we're out of, we're out of this water, we can't get it. And they said, yeah, no sweat, use tap water. That starts to make you question the reasoning behind certain things. Now, I've always been a curious person. I ask a lot of questions. I try not to take things that I hear as just gospel. I like to look into them and try to make my own logical decisions about that. Now, another thing I want to bring up is aerosolized water and how it can make you sick. Now, some of you may live next to a park. I live right by a park and they use non-potable water. Now, potable water is drinking water, tap water, right? That's what I put in my machine. Non-potable water is basically water straight from the reservoir or runoff. So it's not been treated. It's not like someone's pooped in it, but yet at the same time, we all know, we've all seen that dude at the reservoir chilling in an inner tube with a beer on his gut. And you know his little bunghole is all over that water. So basically it's bunghole water. We can all agree on that, correct? The park across the street uses non-potable water to water the grass. I live in a super high wind area. It's very windy very often, especially at night when these sprinklers kick on. Those things hit the park signs. It sends a spraying mist everywhere, which blows all around. Now, you're telling me we can breathe in non-potable water that's touched the chubby man drinking beer in the West Reservoir's stinky little butt, but I can't put tap water in my CPAP machine? Make that make sense. Now I'd like to ask you your honest opinion. Do you really think the CDC has not made mistakes possibly even very recent mistakes, and they constantly change their opinion and their recommendation on something over and over again? Now, what about the FDA? Does the FDA do the same thing? Have medications been approved only to find out that they're actually quite detrimental? They go through this exhaustive testing, they're approved, oopsie, causes heart valve problems. Now, there's a certain amount of risk in anything that we do, and we can never be 100% sure that something's not gonna cause an infection in us. But using tap water, I'm sorry, I'm just not buying it. And if it does worry you, you can microwave it for a couple minutes, let it cool, and you're totally fine. Now, I ask you, what do you think of this? Have I changed your opinion at all? I'm not trying to, I genuinely don't care. It's just very interesting to me that this is where some people draw the line as far as if you're dirty or not. Tap water versus sterile or distilled water. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Am I crazy? Am I wacky? If so, I'm joined by several people. Now, I'm gonna check the poll results here in just a minute, but first, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. Like and subscribe, even if you think I'm dirty and a dirty, filthy animal. I appreciate you guys. Bye. Oh my, I'm way dirtier than originally anticipated. Guys, has anyone changed their opinion on tap water versus distilled water? Let me know in the comment section down below. All joking aside, if bacteria or viral infection is something that you worry about with use of your CPAP device, you can always look into this antibacterial filter. However, you cannot use this filter with the humidifier on. Stewie, don't attack Lego man. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick, <coughs> thanks butter to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espelong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swaringen, Chung Chu Chen, Edward Steiner, and Shannon Kerr, and another slightly less thick thanks, buddy, to all the other YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and other stuff. <laughs>